The customer base audit has been called a masterpiece that challenges companies to measure the differences and dynamics between their customers. I'm Anya Doris Whitehead, contributing editor for Wharton School Press. I have an opportunity to talk to the three authors of the customer base audit. Pete Fader is the Francis and Pei Yuan Chia Professor of Marketing at the Wharton School. Bruce Hardy is Professor of Marketing at London Business School. And Michael Ross is SVP at Edited, a world leader in retail intelligence. So gentlemen, um, the first and most obvious question is, um, what is a customer base audit? Uh, I think the, the, the concise answer that we give in the book is, uh, it's a systematic review of the buying behavior of a firm's customers using data captured by its transaction systems. So the idea is we're just trying to summarize the actual buying behavior. We're not interested in you know, who they are, what they think, their attitude. It's, it's very much about their behavior and trying to provide that, that high level overview uh, for you know, top decision makers in the organization. Everybody understands the idea of an audit. Uh, sometimes it brings fear into the hearts of executives and maybe that's good. That, that idea of, of rigor, accountability, standardization, a kind of a, a very formal way of understanding whatever entity is being audited. Uh, and in this case, the customer base has been notoriously the kind of wild west, uh, lacking all of that, that, that rigor and accountability. And it's about time that we do it. Uh, and I, I think we, we do a reasonable job of both motivating it and, and laying out that framework. And the only thing I'd add to that is that I think it's fair to say most businesses will do some customer analysis, but what we typically find is it sort of a bit ad hoc. It's not systematic and coherent. So I guess the rationale for a, for a customer based audit is is the sort of, as Bruce said, it's it's about the coherence and systematic nature of of the analysis that we're presenting. Okay, so how does this concept of the audit and this sort of this database kind of analysis um, sit within the broader concept of customer centricity? Um, and how does it differ from the idea? Um, I think Bruce, you said that of getting to know your customer. Well, the, the, the customer centricity concept, the idea that not all customers are created equal, and that if we can understand those differences, quantify them and lean into them to really have them drive strategy and tactics and then use them to evaluate uh, th those kinds of tactics. Uh, that's customer centricity. Uh, and as we say in the book, we're like right there in the subtitle of the book, the idea of a customer-based audit is the first step towards customer centricity. And we mean that sincerely because a lot of people uh, uh, have taken some of these the, the, the broader ideas of customer centricity and said, yeah, let's do that. And they'll hang a banner on the lunchroom wall and they'll march ahead, but they don't necessarily have their house in order first. So not only is a customer-based audit a necessary first step once you've committed to customer centricity, but it might be after doing an audit, the thing that really drives the desire to, to follow some of those customer-centric strategies. So it, it, it really is the first step, even though for me personally, it's book number three. And, and I'll, I'll build on that. I think... What I see is, is that again, most businesses on the planet and particularly you know, consumer facing businesses um, have a stated aim of being customer centric. It's almost become a kind of um, an, 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 a, a necessary part of any corporate strategy. Um, the challenge is that people then don't know what it means. And, and so maybe at a high level, people are saying we need to be customer centric, but that is then interpreted through an organization in, in many, many different ways. And again, part of the, the premise of the book is we say we, we believe there is a very clear definition of this, which is to make the customer the unit of analysis and, and to, to look at the, the profitability and the performance of the business through the lens of, 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 of customers. And I, and I think if you are going to you know, be customer centric, you do need a lot of uh, you know, data systems in place. You want to you know, be able to think about how you analyze the data and so forth. And, a lot of companies, especially within the marketing you know, departments, don't really have those competencies or even know where to start. And so the customer base audit can be a wonderful starting point for an organization. So you know, CMO, CMO wanting to you know, get their team to be more customer-centric, to be more data-focused, can use it as a, as a 
as a simple starting point to get them think about to get them thinking about the, the performance of the firm through the lens of the customer. This sounds like a very important and very useful um, idea, a very important and useful concept. Um, you know, why why write about this now? Why hasn't this been written about before? You know, what what is it that's brought the three of you as authors together um, at this particular time to write this book now? Well, there's a there's a, a, a short history and a, and, a, and a long history to this. Um, I mean, I was. Um, I mean, we can edit this out if it's too much information, but um, it's now about 10 years ago that I was in a lecture um, at, at um, Sloan School um, <clears throat> and a lecturer, I, I just happened to be passing through Boston and was invited to, to a, a lecture on customer centricity um, given by um, Michael Braun. And he was talking about everything to do with the history of customer analysis and customer lifetime value modeling and talking about the two got sort of godfathers of customer analysis, the sort of Fader and Hardy, who I presumed were long dead. Um, <laughs> and then when I, I looked them up, I, you know, and realized that they were alive and well. In fact, Bruce was um, at London Business School down the road from where I lived. So um, I originally met Bruce about now, you know, 10 or 11 years ago. Um, we then started co-teaching um, a course at London Business School now about five or six years ago. And, and through our collaboration, we realized that the, the, the sort of topics of how to analyze a customer base um, were, you know, I was coming at it from a, a, a sort of a, a practitioner perspective and from a sort of working with, with, with retailers and other consumer facing businesses. And they just, you know, there wasn't anything in the, in the world that, that actually, um, you know, was books that we could look at that said, this is, this is, um, yeah, the, 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 the documented how to do this in practice. So um, yeah, obviously Bruce and Pete have, have been collaborating for a very, very long time. And so we probably started talking about a book now, I'd say maybe four years ago. Um, and as with all these things, it, it took a bit longer um, than, than we might have um, we might have hoped. And let me go a little bit further back, uh, looking through some emails and finding the first time that, that Bruce Hardy put those words together, and I believe it was 2004. Uh, so, so it's something that we've been uh, viewing kind of uh, aspirationally for ourselves for, for quite some time. Uh, but uh, as academics, we're, we're too busy uh, just writing articles for, for journals and so on. Uh, I think it was, it was really important to take a step back. Let's just put aside you know, pushing the frontiers uh, in terms of of, of math and and all that, uh, and and offer this 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 much broader and and hopefully impactful uh, series of of observations and suggestions. Again, been swirling around for a long time, but actually putting pen to paper, uh, organizing our thoughts, uh, it, it, it's it's considerable effort, and and I think uh, uh, Bruce deserves a lot of credit for really pushing it ahead. Well, you know, Pete, Pete and I have been working together since uh, well, 1989, so it's quite a while. We've been playing with with customer data for sort of that that length of time. But but back, you know, in, in the in the early noughties, as Pete was mentioning, I, I you know I was doing some work for the company, got access to their you know their entire transaction database, and was trying to work out what kinds of analyses should I do? How can I approach this in a structured manner? And so you know, there are lots of things that Pete and I had done, but how could I bring that all? To, how could we bring it all together to have a you know a a, um, a, a clear report for senior management? And I distinctly remember when I put together you know, put together a three or four page document, gave it to the CEO, and when I next met with him, he, he made the comment that I've learned more from this document than I have from all the reports that marketing has ever given me. And I thought, okay. We're onto something here, but trying to, you know, package that all around took time. As 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 Pete said, you know, we had to just work out the, the right way of, of of packaging it. And then, you know, when we you know connected with with Michael and he was doing similar types of analyses, uh, you know, just the three of us were able to sit down and formalize our thinking. And the uh, the result is the book, which is something that we are that we're very proud of. Okay, well, let's get into the nitty gritty then. Um, what is or what are the benefits of 
uh, of running your own customer based audit? Why why do it? So I, I think that uh, for, for me, there's you know it, it is this thing of getting the um, you know looking at the organization through the lens of the customer. Um, you know, a, a former colleague of mine used to uh, defines marketing, which is Dr. Tamambla defines marketing as the sourcing and harvesting of an cash flow. And if we think about you know, revenue, revenue is simply the sum of the value of all the transactions. And that's, you know, the transaction occurs when someone pulls out their, their credit card and pays for it. Yet we, we aggregate up all that data and we don't, we forget the customer when we are actually analyzing the performance of our firm. Uh, and, and so really, you know, for me, one of the key values of the customer-based audit is this whole focus of firm performance through the lens of the customer and then exploring what follows on from that. I think there are many, you know, most businesses now that that, that I work with and talk to um, are grappling with post-COVID customer behavior shifts, you know, that, that, that maybe dynamics that were happening before, before COVID have been massively amplified and accelerating. And particularly businesses that, that used to think in channels, you know, where well, we've got a physical channel and we've got a digital channel, have recognized that that's not how customers think. And so I think what we're seeing now is that businesses recognize that um, they need a new way of understanding how their business is performing. Um, and so customer-based audit is, is frankly a, a brilliant way to catalyze a change in, in, in thinking. Um, it's often the, the, the problem that, you know, businesses just don't know where to start. And so the idea of saying, you know, if we start with, you know, where do, where do I start? I want to change. I recognize the need to think differently, but what do I actually do? And it's very, very hard. You can have hypotheses, but the, the, the power of a, of a, of a customer based audit is it's, it, it, it's coherence, it's breadth, systematic approach. So really what I would say is by doing a, it's like looking at your business under a microscope. It really exposes, doesn't tell you the answer, but it really helps you frame the questions. And, and again, with, 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 with you know, leaders and managers inspired by a customer based audit, it, it then leads them to think about their business differently. I, we spend a lot of time thinking about the role of marketing in the C-suite. Uh, and in many cases, the, the folks in marketing are kind of like, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, the, the ugly stepchild of, of the senior management team. That's why there's so much turnover with the chief marketing officer. There's often disbelief, sometimes disrespect for, for a lot of the practices in marketing. So by doing something as rigorous uh, as a customer-based audit, uh, we hope that that will raise the, the visibility, the respect for the, the practice of marketing and take some of the things that, that we and marketers are very proud of uh, and make them of, of, of greater interest and vitality to, to folks in other parts of the organization. So we often talk about bridge building between marketing and finance, and that, that's certainly uh, a, a big part of it. But a lot of it is just kind of level setting to kind of raise that level of marketing so it's, it's on the same level as everybody else. Uh, and therefore, will will help uh, uh, improve the kinds of decisions that are made there, and the kinds of resources that will flow to marketing. So, Pete, it's interesting you you use the word rigorous, and you're talking about the sort of the leveling up of of marketing um, to engage in in a more rigorous uh, dialogue with other parts of the business. You yourselves, in this book, you say that this is not a typical business book. And in fact, I quote you, you describe the book as a deep dive into detailed customer data. That sounds pretty technical to me. So to what extent do you need to have a technical background? Is this a book for data scientists? Who, who is this book for? That's a great question. And uh, f- first, I think it's important to draw a contrast between this book and the, the, the previous two books that, that I wrote on customer centricity, because those were light and breezy and anecdotal. We stand behind it all, uh, but it, but it, it does lack the, the, the kind of technical angle that, that's going on here. Uh, to your point, it, it's fair to say that a lot of traditional marketing people will look at, at, at much of the book and say, oh, this is, this is too technical. And it's not that there's math involved, but it does involve careful handling, careful analysis, careful inferences from data, uh, which should be part of every marketer's toolkit 
uh, and should be of just as much interest to other folks in the C-suite. Uh, so so uh, th 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 that's kind of a, a canary in the coal mine kind of test. Uh, and we hope it will get to the point where, where all firms will look at this and say, yeah, if the folks in marketing can't understand, execute, and appreciate what they're doing here, then maybe they shouldn't be in our organization. So uh, th this is part of that, that level raising. And, and uh, uh, time will tell how, how we succeed. Maybe one thing to add to that. I think you know most business leaders would would understand that they they need a a pretty good grasp of accounting. Um, you can't expect to be a senior leader and not understand the difference between a, a profit and loss and a balance sheet and a cash flow and have some comfort in understanding and being able to sort of operate at, at that, that level. And I think we would describe um, a customer base audit as a sort of similar a, a sort of si similar um, idea. Um, they're unfamiliar analyses, no question about that. But um, we would say that every senior executive should be able to read and understand and interpret the sorts of um, analyses that we find in the book. The, the, the maths um, is really not complicated. Um, and so um, it's just not familiar. And so, but, but, but from our perspective, that Right, it's it's hard to imagine a leadership team that will be where it will be acceptable to say, oh no, no, this is too this is too complicated. We we can't understand it, and it's certainly this is not for data scientists. This is this is much much broader, um, and we would say is 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 fundamental to any any sort of consumer facing, um, well, frankly, any business that has a customer base. You know, if you're selling nu nuclear reactors. Um, maybe um, this is not the book for you, but but if you if you have more customers than you can print out on a couple of sheets of A4 paper, um, you need to be um, understanding these sort of analyses. And I, and I think you know Michael's point about you know, read, understand, and interpret is 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 the key is really important. So it's not about doing the analysis. We're assuming that there will be people in the firm who are doing that analysis for you, but when you receive you know, the, the PowerPoint deck or whatever, you are able to, you know, understand what's going on and then transfer that into, you know, insight and uh, actions within your firm. You know, have, having said that, the, the analysis is not that difficult. Uh, you know, if you've got a smallish uh, you know, firm, you can do the analysis in that really complicated analytical tool called Excel. In fact, in about uh, just over... About three weeks' time, in fact, three weeks' time to the day, I think it is, uh, or it's yesterday, we'll, Michael and I, with our class, will be running a hackathon where we give the students data for about 400,000 customers over, over four years. And we say, you've got 12 hours to generate or to do the customer base audit. And uh, you know, those MBA students do a phenomenal job simply using Excel. So you know, it's not difficult to perform. But your, you know, your inability or your lack of interest in doing the analysis should not stop you from reading the book. Okay, Bruce. Well, let's let's maybe put that to the test um, because uh, in in your book, um, in the second chapter, I believe in your book, you introduce a concept which is the data cube, um, and you also talk about the five lenses. Now, you say this isn't hard to understand um, from some for somebody who's not from a technical background, aka myself. Uh, these nonetheless sound like quite complex ideas. Um, maybe you could just break those down for us. What, what do you mean by the data cube and what are these five lenses? Okay. So um, if you think about you know, any transaction, you, you buy something in a, in a, in a, a, from a company and there are, there are multiple you know, labels or tags you could put on that transaction. But at, at the simplest level, it would be, you know, it would be who bought what, and when. So you, you've got these sort of these three dimensions, customer, product, and time. And you know, we, we could visualize that as a cube. In fact, I, I have a cube here where you know, we've got one dimension as customer, one dimension as time, and another dimension as product. Now we're not, you know, we're not good at visualizing uh, three-dimensional data. So if you think about most of the reports that we receive uh, in, a, in an organization, what we're doing is we are focusing perhaps on the performance of products over time, 
And what we're doing is we're summing it up over the customer dimension. Yes, when we look at the sales of a particular product in a particular week, well, that's just the sum of all the transactions by customers. But that's hidden in our reporting system. So what we say, you know, and sort of the starting point for the customer base audit is what happens if we go from this product time base of the queue and rotate it? So now we are looking at customers over time. And when I look at your purchasing in a particular week, yes, that's summing up over all the different products that you were looking, you, you purchased. But for now, we'll ignore that product dimension. So if I'm now looking at my, the performance of my firm through this, this table, which is just the purchasing of cu different customers over time, how do we approach that? Um, and so we've, you know, we propose that there are, you know, well, there are multiple ways of looking at it. But one way of organizing all the types of analyses we could undertake is through what we call the five lenses. Uh, and so the first lens says, let's just take one vertical slice of data. So let's say, let's look at the purchasing by all our customers in the past year. What analyses could we, could we undertake with that? And we, we outlined that in the third chapter. We could then say, let's look at two adjacent vertical slices. You say, you know, 2021, you know, 2020. And as we try to understand the changes in the performance of the firm through those, you know, across those two time periods, let's look at those changes through the lens of the customer. So sales went up. Well, how much of that is due to acquiring new customers versus, uh, you know, uh, existing customers buying more? So, that we, so we have one vertical slice, two vertical slice. The third lens says, let's take a horizontal slice. Let's look at a what we'll call a cohort of customers, a group of customers acquired at the same time. And now let's look at the evolution of their buying behavior over time. And typically that, that decays over time. But let's try and understand that. Having looked at, say, you know, one group of customers, say those acquired in you know, Q1 2019, we might say, well, how does that cohort, that group of customers, compare to, say, the cohort acquired in Q2 2019? So we're now comparing and contrasting two cohorts, two cohorts. That's the fourth lens. And the fifth lens then basically steps back and says, let's look at this whole, this whole sort of customer over time face and understand, well, how healthy is out there? Uh, so those are, you know, perhaps a bit of a too technical dive, but that's sort of the, the summary of those five lenses. And it's uh, important to point out that uh, a lot of the analyses that we do in the book that we convey through the lenses, they're not new. Uh, they're, they've been around. A lot of companies uh, will, will do these things from time to time on an as-needed basis. So in some sense, you might say we're just taking practices that are out there and formalizing them. So be it. That's great. Uh, we're not necessarily trying to invent something new, but, we, but by having a coherent way to look at them and understanding where they fit with each other and when we might lean into one versus another, uh, I think that's, that's the real value uh, of the cube and the lenses and the book as a whole. One of the central ideas of, of the book is, is the importance of, of cohorts. And when we talk about a customer cohort, we, we talk about a group of customers who were acquired or born in a specific period, whether that could be a, a year or a quarter or a month. And, and the power of a cohort is that the membership of a cohort is immutable. Um, once you're a member of a particular cohort, it, you are a member of that cohort for life. Um, and, and the power of that is then you can understand the, the behavior and performance of cohorts over time. And a number of the lenses build on that concept. What we see that a number of businesses who, who analyze customer behavior in different ways is they will create personas, um, behavioral segments of customers. Um, and the challenge with those is the membership of those groups can change over time. And so it becomes incredibly complex when, the, when you do analysis to actually understand um, is, 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 is this subgroup of, of, of um, the persona, for example, um, is it that it's performing badly or is it that the membership of the persona has changed over time? So we do think that there is a, a, a kind of a foundational nature of the way that we think about 
the cube and the lenses that is a whatever other analysis you do um start with start with the, the, the customer base audit because everything else builds upon that I think based on on what you've just said, I'm I'm pretty clear about what your answer will be to to the next and to the final question that I I have for all three of you, um, which is, what key idea, what core idea would you like your reader to take away from from this book, from the customer base audit? What one thing, or perhaps two things, would you like your reader to just embed and take away, and and then action within their organisation? If customer analysis is is too important um, to be owned by marketing, I think one of our, our big ideas, and I can say this in front of two marketing professors, you know, the two for the for the sort of history, you know, oh customers, oh, that that's in marketing, and we would see if there's one idea to take away is that this is really a CEO issue that that the the this the opportunity is to put customers right at the heart of businesses. Um, and to put this right on the CEO's agenda. That's that what I would say is if, if people are left with one idea. And also that the, the customer analysis shouldn't be a scary proposition. Yes, um, there are a lot of graphs in the book, but there is a coherent, systematic way to analyze your customer base. I, I think the you know some of the, the, the basic insights that you actually get into the behavior of your customers can be so powerful. You know, we all talk about, for example, we talk about the idea that customers are not equal, but actually, and we throw around things like 80-20, but what's the reality for your firm? And just starting to unpack that can result in some phenomenal conversations uh, about just how, how the firm is organized, how we structure our, 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 our marketing and so forth. So it's, it's, it, it, the, the, the basic analysis can be wonderful conversation starters within the organization. A lot of the work that I do, uh, very often in conjunction with, with Bruce and other colleagues, is on forecasting models, predictive analytics, customer lifetime value, uh, a lot of concepts, methods that have, have become really popular of late. But for a lot of companies, a lot of executives, that's pretty heavy lift. Uh, starting with a customer base audit, uh, the, the words that we like to use in, in the book is that it's uh, unashamedly descriptive, that they're just in the data that you have without having to go out there and, and work with other vendors, buy other reports, there's pure gold. And we just want to help companies see that, mine it, and then feel that much more confident, that much more motivated to, to start taking the descriptives and ta- start turning it into the predictives. But one step at a time, walk before you can run, start with the customer base audit. Gentlemen, um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's been a great pleasure to, to speak to you. Um, the Customer Base Audit is published by uh, Wharton School Press and is available this fall. Very best of luck with the book. And um, thank you again for, for making the time to speak to us today. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.